Welcome to lesson three of Photoshop. This Photoshop lesson is all about selections. Selections are so important to Photoshop that they have multiple tools dedicated to selections. Doing a great selection is a difference between easily modifying the image and having a hard time blending images together. In this particular chapter, we're going to put everything we select on the separate layer. Ignore what the book tells you for that particular assignment. We're going to create a layer for everything that we create. Let's go ahead. I already have it open, but let me go ahead and reopen the document. So I'm going to go file, open a new document, going to navigate to lesson three, going to click on start the document. And there is my document in front of you that I'm going to be modifying, the image that I'm going to be modifying. Notice under the layers panel, you have something called background. And right now there's a lock. The lock indicates that you cannot do any changes on this particular layer. So if you double click, you can rename the layer and unlock it at the same time. This is going to just be called frame. Uh, and I'm going to click OK. Notice the lock is gone. And now this layer is called the frame. So uh, there's a new feature in this particular Photoshop 2020 for those of you who have 2020. And this feature is called Object Selection Tool. Uh, it was mostly popular under this menu. There used to be a Quick Selection Tool and a Magnetic Wand Tool. But now they added Object Selection Tool. And I want to just cover it quickly. Let's go ahead and zoom into the object. I want to select the object, this uh, send dollar right here. So if I take this tool and go outside the send dollar, it's not going to give me the, right, the selection I'm looking for. It's going to select all of this area, including the red color surrounding the send dollar. Control D will unselect what you just selected. So now if I go inside the send dollar on the solid color, notice what happens. The send dollar gets selected. Now we have it selected. We can move it around and such. What we're going to do is we're going to say layer, new layer, and we're going to do it via cut to a new layer. We're going to cut from this frames layer that we created. We're going to cut the sand dollar out by selecting cut. There's a shortcut key, shift, control J. We're going to use a cut and we're going to create a new layer. Notice a new layer one was created. I'm going to go ahead and name it to see what it is. Notice this eyeball right next to the layer. If I click it, the send dollar should disappear because we did a cut. What you see below it is this checker pattern, it means there's no data, there's nothing. This is basically emptiness. And we have a send dollar now that we selected it. The other thing we can do with selections is select this plate. To select this plate, yes, we can use the same exact tool, but what's the fun in that? We are going to use an elliptical tool. Elliptical tool is really hard for new people to master because you have to hold down the mouse key, the left mouse key, and use the control, the shift, the alt key in order to make a perfect selection. Let's go ahead and try that. I, right now, I am just holding the left mouse key and made a selection. Notice the left side of my selection is inside the plate. So I'm going to use the space while still holding the left mouse button. I haven't removed it because when you're in this particular tool, when you remove your left finger off the mouse, you commit the selection. Game over. So I'm pressing the left mouse button. Now I'm going to, um, with my left hand, I'm going to uh, press and hold the space bar. Notice now I can move the circle on the screen. I'm going to align the circle edge to the top left edge, just like that. Do you see that? And now I'm going to continue. I release the space bar and now I continue selecting the plate using my uh, mouse. 
Now, notice I'm still clipping a little bit of the plate on the left-hand side, right around nine o'clock. Do you guys see that? I'm gonna press the space bar and move the circle just a little bit and a little bit down and release the space bar. I'm not releasing my left mouse button. It is continuously being held in place in a downward fashion. Now, I finish my selection of the plate and when I'm ready and when I'm ready to commit, which is right about now, I'm going to lift off the left mouse button and there's my selection. I'm going to go ahead and copy this selection to a new layer. Go on the layers and I'm going to say new layer via copy. Notice my mistake. It's not giving me a layer to copy. The reason this is happening is I don't have a layer selected. Make sure you select an image that has that layer. So notice my selection doesn't change. I'm going to hit frame, right? Because if I hide the frame, notice there's emptiness. I'm going to select the frame layer. And now I'm going to go to layers, new layers. And now it gives me those, all of these options come back and I'm going to do layer via cut. And this layer is going to be called plate. So now you'll see empty holes where I had something selected and I cut it out, right? I'm basically clicking on I'm basically clicking on the eye of the layers to make it visible or hidden. Right. The next thing I'm going to do is in this particular lesson, I'm going to use a different selection tool that we haven't used before. And this is called a magnetic lasso tool. Magnetic lasso tool is great in the situations where there's multiple colors and you're trying to select. Notice right now there is a, um, an icon on the screen that says like, do not enter. The reason is I don't have any layer selected. So select your layer, which is the frame layer. And there's my magnet and there's my lasso tool. So I'm going to click on the edge and I'm dragging, I'm not even clicking or holding the mouse button. I'm just dragging closely to the shell. If I make a mistake like this, I can continue dragging. Notice there's a mistake right there that I intentionally made. When you get to a sharp band, it's recommended that you click once. When you click the left mouse button once, it artificially puts in an anchor point. Notice the little dot that appeared. And now I can continue selecting using my magnetic lasso. When you get to the end dot, notice that little circle degree mark appears right underneath the magnet. Do you see it? That indicates that when you click there, the selection will be complete. Notice this mistake that I have here. I can use the lasso tool or any uh, magnetic lasso tool or any other tool to correct this mistake. I'm going to go ahead and utilize, let's see, I'm going to use the quick select tool to remove the mistake I've done. Notice right now it's the plus. If I hold the alt key, it becomes the minus and I can just erase, unselect the area, just like that. Now I'm ready to copy it to a new layer. Layers, new layer, copy or cut to a new layer. That's my Nautilus shell. I just put an and, and uh, there's my Nautilus shell being copied to a new layer. I can do the same thing with this particular screw head. So let me go ahead and try the new tools they have in Adobe and see how it will actually work. Is it going to do it for me? Let's find out. It did, but not very well. Look at that. It requires me to fix a lot of issues. 
I'm not in the mood of fixing all of this. So I'm going to do control D to deselect and I'm going to use the elliptical tool one more time to draw the circle I want. Using the space bar and I'm using the space bar to adjust my circle size. Right now I'm pressing the space bar. I'm moving the circle into position, releasing the space bar and adjusting my selection. Look at that. There is my screw. I'm going to go ahead, layer new via cut. And the new layer is formed. So now I have a few more layers to select. I have this little shell to select and this particular guy to select. So now I'm going to select, let me see what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the object select tool on the correct layer to select this object, release my mouse and bam, it's selected. It didn't do a good job in selecting it because look at this white space, it's not selected. So what can I do to rectify the situation? I'm going to, let's see, what's gonna be the easiest thing for me to do? See, it didn't do a good selection everywhere. So I'm gonna do Control Z to undo that or Control D to deselect. I'm gonna use a rectangular tool and then uh, let me see if I'm gonna be able to do it with a magic, ooh, quick, oh, let's do a magic wand tool. Everything is selected. I'm gonna hit the minus key because I wanna, right now everything is selected, including the white background. I'm gonna use the magic wand tool and I'm using the alt key to subtract this white background from my desired selection. And that's a better selection. See that? Look at that. I'm going to go ahead and layers new, excuse me, layer new via cot. And there's my coral. And I'm going to hide it. Now all I have left is the she shell. And if this would have been an interactive session, I would have asked all of you to what tool you'd like me to use, a lasso tool, polygon lasso tool, magnetic lasso tool. I'm going to go ahead and utilize, let me see. I'm gonna use the magic wand tool and see how that will work. Notice everything got selected. That's not the desired that's not the desired effect I want. Control D to deselect. Let's go ahead and select it on this particular shell. Notice how it selected everything that is uniform in color. There's a tolerance level. Let's go ahead and bump up the tolerance level all the way up. Notice how it selected a little bit more of the desired shell. I can click again by holding down the shift key for to add, I wanna add areas, so I'm holding down the shift key and it's adding more colors. But notice, I just clicked this white background. Notice all the other stuff it added. That's not what I wanna do. So let's go ahead and use the quick select tool instead. Bam. So now that I'm zooming in to correct some of the issues and notice if I zoom a lot, you'll see pixels. We covered pixels in the first or second chapter where we talked about pixelation. And remember I said each pixel can only have one color. It cannot have a gradient. So if you really zoom in, notice each, each pixel has one color. You never see a single square with more than one color in it. Let's go ahead and zoom out. Notice I'm going to about to fix this area. So I'm going to add to my selection. Notice it's already a plus. So if it's already a plus, I don't have to hold down any special keys. I can just add and I'm adding just by clicking what, what I want to add very carefully. If I did a mistake and add too much, now I have to subtract this area. So I'm going to go ahead and click Alt key 
and do a subtraction on this area, just like that, very carefully. Let's go ahead and zoom out and see what it looks like. That shell looks pretty good. Anywhere else you guys see, see that I might need to add or subtract areas? Well, how about right here, just a little bit to add. There. Boom, just like that, right? Add right here, just a little bit. See that? I'm selecting the pixels. That looks good, right? And I'm going to go ahead and go layer, new layer via cot. And I don't know, this is a muscle, so I'm just gonna put an M for muscle. So I got all of my things selected and ready to be moved. Now I'm gonna take the frame and I'm going to crop, using the crop tool, crop this image. But before I do that, let me go ahead and move all my layers to where they need to be. I'm going to use the move tool. Notice I, I showed all my layers and I'm just going to start moving my layers around where they need to go. I'll show you how to move this layer in a few minutes. I'm just moving things into their perspective location. See that? Now I'm going to use the crop tool. If I would have used the crop tool before, it would have cropped some of these lower portions, which I'm about to crop. And I would have, uh, uh, would have been in a little bit of trouble because it would have deleted all my layers, all my work. Here we go. Let me go ahead and select the sides. I'm just gonna bring it in a little bit. Just like you did the, in the previous section using the crop tool. When you're done, you can commit the crop tool by clicking the check mark, right? We have one more thing to do. And in this particular lesson, we have the, not a, the shell to select. I'm gonna select the shell by clicking on it and it goes right into muscle, or I can click on the layer, right? If I wanna select the plate, I click on the plate. Coral, click on the coral. This time I'm gonna click on the muscle and the layer gets automatically selected. Sometimes when the layers are complex, you won't be able to do that. And I'll show you that technique later. So right now we have this muscle shell selected. We're gonna to go to edit and we're gonna do a free transform. Notice four squares came around. Remember we did this in crop tool. We went outside the layer and we can rotate it. We can also make it super long, right? We can make it larger, we can make it smaller, depends on what you need. And there is my layer. There's my muscle, perfect. Love it. When you're ready, go ahead and uh, click commit, or you can hit enter on the keyboard and we're done. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna resize this, this little screw. So we're gonna do edit and we're gonna do a free transform and we're gonna make the screw a small size. We're gonna move it. When I'm moving it, I'm, I'm just left clicking inside the square and positioning it where I want it to be and how I big I want it. There's my screw. When I'm ready, I hit enter. Now the next thing to do is to duplicate the screw because we need the screw on all four corners. So we can duplicate it in a different way, duplicate layer. Or you can also duplicate it by holding down the Alt key and dragging the layer down. I need four screws. So there's four screws being duplicated. Well, where are all my screws? You don't see them because they're all copied in the same location. So let's go ahead and click on screw one. And let's go ahead and move screw one out of the way. Let's go ahead and click on screw number two and move it out of the way. Notice the automatic positioning. Uh, you see those pink lines? They tell you when things are positioned and aligned on the image. 
right? And let's go screw, screw number two. Let's go ahead and move it over here and it's aligned. Okay, we're almost done. The only thing we have left is to rotate each screw because look at this, how often do you look at something and see the screws exactly on the same location? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go edit and we're gonna do a free transform on, on each particular screw. We're just gonna give it some character. Click on the other screw, edit, free transform. Where's my free transform? Do you guys see my free transform? I kind of lost it, there it is. It doesn't have to be straight. Hit enter. Control T is a shortcut for tweet free transform. And I'm gonna go ahead and do it this way. Hit commit. Select the next screw, next screw control, control T to transform. Oh, don't wanna make it smaller. Wanna all make the same size. And there is my screws. Now, this is going beyond what the book says. We have extra layers. This is what I want you to submit to me. I want to see all the different layers you have. Do not flatten or merge the layers. You will get a very bad grade because I want to see those layers. If you click on flatten image, everything becomes one layer. And then you can't really modify the layers. You can't reselect and modify the layers. So don't do that. Because right now I can select any particular area and move it. If you flatten it, A, you destroy the image what's below the layer, like this area will be destroyed. All of these areas will be destroyed if you flatten the image. So it's not a good thing to do. To find adjust, we can use the, the keyboard up, down, left, right arrow keys to do a fine adjustment of the placement of each particular image. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all the screws and I'm going to create a new folder. See all the screws are selected? I selected the first one, hold down the shift key, selected the last one, and I'm gonna click on this folder icon, create a new group. A new group is created and all my screws are put in the, in the folder. Master screw, there we go. This is what I expect to see from you. The one final thing I'm going to do before I finalize this image is I'm gonna label this piece of artwork with my name. I'm gonna use the text tool, which is the letter T. Horizontal or vertical, doesn't matter which way you're gonna do it. I'm gonna do my horizontally. I'm gonna place the T. Well, let me do a larger font so the instructor can see my, my name. I'm going to place, place, place it anywhere on the canvas and I'm going to type in. So now look at it, it's too big. So I'm going to uh, uh, so double click to select and make it a little smaller, still smaller. There we go. Now it's in the right location. I'm going to hit enter. Oh, I just messed it up. I'm just going through, going forward to actually finish up what I'm doing, edit and why am I not seeing my letters? Because it didn't take it. There we go. Now it should be okay when I hit commit. I'm going to use the move tool to move my letters around and there they are. You can change the colors of the letters and so on, but that's a different topic. There's the color that we can change for the lettering. Save the file, file save as, and do not show again. 
I'm going to save it to my computer where I can find it. And I'm going to label this for the standard. Paransky underscore. Paran, excuse me. Paransky underscore lesson. Lesson underscore three. And I'm going to hit save. This is the file you're going to upload to Canvas for a grade. I'm grading you on these layers. I'm grading you on creating this folder. And I'm grading you on your selections, how clean the selections are. Now, I'm going to go ahead and select this shell. And I'm going to flatten the image together, the shell and the frame. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say merge layers. Flatten will flatten everything. Merge visible, all of them are visible. It's going to merge all of them. I'm going to just merge layers. Do not do that for your homework. I just want to show you what happens. Two layers are merged right now. Notice this particular layer is now, let me go ahead and close all my other layers. These two are one layer. Let's go ahead and say, like, oh, that's no big deal, right? It's merge. I can reselect. I know how to select. So I'm going to go ahead and reselect this. Let me see if I can do it really quickly this way. Now I'm going to move it to a new layer, right? I'm just, I'm just going to move it out of the way. Oh, look at that. The data below this area is now damaged. You cannot get it back. Yeah, you saved the shell, but the area now, when you move things, is damaged. What if you just want to go ahead and transform this shell just a little bit, just like that? You like it to be not exactly perfectly straight. You want it slightly on an angle. Well, guess what? Now you're missing data and pixels. This is why you don't merge your layers until you're done with your entire project. And then you save your project, you make a copy of it, and then you start merging it, just in case you want to go back to your project and re, um, and re uh, edit something, rechange something, right? you'll be able to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and control Z backwards to save my area and now we save the project, file save. There we go. That is it. Thank you for joining me for lesson three. I know it was a little bit long, but read the book, follow the book, except for when they say flatten the layers. And if it's, they have you do everything on one layer, do not follow that book. Go ahead and create a separate layer for separate object. Thank you very much. I'm Professor Peransky, and I'll see you in lesson four.